So today I'm going to be talking about two interesting Polaroid items. One of them is relatively new and the other one is sort of the earlier iteration of that. They are the Polaroid Impossible Lab and Polaroid Originals Lab. So to start off, the original lab, which was very, very simple, you've got this. Essentially it's a bellows mechanism, you can get a much smaller package and you don't have to worry about this height. Um, what these are is basically these are to print photos on from your phone. So ideally what you do, get a picture on your phone, put it on top through their own app. So there's an app for the Impossible Lab and there's an app for the Polaroid Lab. And then what that will do is expose the film to the phone screen and from that you can then print a physical Polaroid picture, which means you can get prints from say a digital camera onto Polaroid so they'll be much sharper, you can do some editing and it also means that you can duplicate Polaroid so you can have a Polaroid that you have multiple copies of exactly the same image and you don't have to worry about slight differences if you want that reproducibility. So the original Polaroid Lab which takes eye type film um, was introduced, there was a Kickstarter in 2013 that got fully funded and so they began manufacture of this. So I bought this second hand on eBay which is a good way to do it, they're very easy to find um, but the price of them has increased since they were new. I mean they weren't cheap when they were new but they're more more expensive now and I'll get into the reasons why later. The second one which is the Polaroid Lab is a much newer so it came out sort of September, October 2019 and this is obviously by the new Polaroid Originals. This is obviously not collapsible so everything is seated here but you press this button on the side here and it starts working. So there's a little bit of height saved just by having that and then push that back down and it turns it off. But same principle, so got a lens up here which will see the screen of your phone and then it will print onto a Polaroid. So both of these take eye type film which means they've got rechargeable batteries in them and you don't have to have, you don't have to buy either the 600 or the SX70 film which have the battery in the film so you're going to be spending less on film and in theory you're going to be producing photos that are more reliable so the photos are going to be in theory better quality. I bought this one for a particular reason because I, I like the idea of being able to print digital photos or any photos really onto a Polaroid and that was the same reason I bought this one although at the time I had the RB67 and there was a company called Resivot who are a company based in Thailand I believe and they produced an adapter plate to fit the the impossible lab to the RB67 and I was really interested at the time so I, I considered doing that um, but then I sold the RB obviously so I can't do that with that but yeah they're very simple to use they've got their own dedicated apps as I said there's not really much to it you go through the app the the impossible lab app is narrated by Werner Herzog which is quite an experience, sort of a monotone um, European accent which is quite funny to listen to but it's entertaining. Um, then the Polaroid Lab, they've got a new app for that which is will let you scan Polaroids, it will, with your phone it will let you uh, basically control the um, Polaroid, it will let you control the One Step Plus with the app so it's all trying to be built into one app. When the Impossible Lab was current, they also had the, I believe it was the i1 or the L1. So the i1 was Polar Impossible's first iteration, it's their first own camera. It's designed by, I believe, Teenage Engineering, which do a lot of very, very cool electronic things. But it was a very simple camera. There wasn't really much to it. It was, uh, Put it. For some people it was what they wanted, they wanted just a very basic point and shoot but for a lot of people it wasn't enough, it didn't have enough features, it was a bit too simple to be honest and the Impossible Lab was much more successful and this is essentially just the ejection unit, film ejection unit of original i1 
Now, because both of them take the same film, they will essentially, you'll get the same sort of style of picture. I did a quick comparison between the two, printed the same picture from on both machines. So I bought a twin pack of iType film, so two packs in one box. And what that meant was that I could basically test both of them with the same film in theory. So it's film that's been stored in exactly the same way in both machines, see what the differences were. I'm gonna pop up the comparison here. So it wasn't a massive difference, in, but it, the colors in the Polaroid Labs of the new one were a lot better, whereas the old one, it was a lot more washed out. I don't know what that was. I don't know if that was the film spreaders or if that was the quality of the lens, but for some reason, it just didn't hold up as well. So I used the same phone. The film should be the same. They were both ejected at the same, relatively simultaneously, and they were both exposed pretty much at the same time. It was consecutive, so I did one and then did the other. So there shouldn't have been any difference in the images in theory but as you can see there was quite a lot of difference and I think that's mainly due to the quality of the lens I can't think of what else it might be and yeah so that was that was quite interesting but I recently the company that produced the RB adapter Resibot produced something else so they recently came out with this which is a Vermeer RZ67 adapter kit so this is the reason why the Impossible Lab has sort of had a resurgence. It's because people were going after these in order to adapt them to their cameras. Now, I'm not the best person for taking things apart and fixing them and things like that, but I'm going to attempt to adapt my Impossible Lab to fit my RB. So I will still have a Polaroid printer in the form of the Polaroid Lab, but my Impossible Lab will then be an instant printer for, or an instant back, essentially, for my RZ67, which is quite interesting, to be honest. I'm very excited for it. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to put up a, so it's either going to be a time-lapse or a video, and I'll narrate over that, sort of what's happening and what's going on at which bit. And at the end, um, once I finish all this, I'll do some test shots and I'll put those up as well. But yeah, so that's the, this is the Polaroid Lab, so this one's Polaroid Lab, and then this is the Impossible Lab. So both very, very similar, but also different in their own sort of ways. For anyone who wasn't, who isn't sure about Polaroid or wants to, doesn't like the essentially potential failure of the Polaroid, I know the one step cameras can be a little bit frustrating to use, um, you can get incorrect images or incorrect exposures, things like that, so I can see why these would be a, definitely a popular option, I mean it's a nice way to have physical prints from digital photos, so it's going to be different, but it's another way of looking at it, which is a nice thing. A lot of people are very critical of these, just because they say it's not a true Polaroid camera, but if you're creating something and you're enjoying it then that's fine by me it doesn't bother me yeah, they're fun to use that's all it really is so what i'm going to do is i'm going to quickly show you how the work how this all works um with the polaroid lab what i'm going to do is to turn it on press the button on the side and that pushes it up and you see these lights here light up as do the lights down here on the to tell you how many pictures you've got what you have to do take the cover off select a picture in the app so you go to the app which I'll put up here as you can see at the bottom you've got a range of things that you can do from controlling the camera and all that so what you can also do is a range of collages with the Polaroid lab which I haven't tried yet but it seems to be quite fun so I'm gonna quickly start doing a picture and I'm gonna do this picture here but I'm gonna do that picture there I should be using black and white film, but I'm not. Um, the one advantage that the Impossible Lab app has over the Polaroid Lab is that you can move the picture up and down to choose your framing in the, in the Impossible app, which you can't do in the Polaroid Lab. I'm not sure why, hopefully they bring something out in firmware that sorts that out, but as you get it, it just crops everything square so that it 
basically fits in a single image and you can't move it up or down so if you want to have a particular part of the image printed I would say crop it in photos first and crop it square just to make sure that it will fit so all I have to do is press the button here and it will basically tell me check settings so true tone and true tone and automatic brightness and night shift so yes agree as settings are off so press the button already and then I will do let's do this so now all I have to do is put my phone down on the screen screen facing down and I have to press this once that's flashed there you go so that has exposed the picture I'm going to cover that there once that's developed I'll scan it and put it up but it's that easy Polaroid Lab won't print a picture if it knows there wasn't correct alignment with the phone so once you've got correct align alignment it will let you press the button and then it'll take a picture if it doesn't have that correct alignment it won't take a picture and it won't print anything out because there's nothing to print out basically it doesn't want you to waste a frame which is a very good it's a good way to do it to be honest um, but yeah that's how the Polaroid lab works and yeah let's get on to the impossible lab I'm now going to do the same picture with the impossible lab and show you sort of how that all works so straight off the bat first thing you have to do to open it pull the sides lift up it should click if you push down a little bit if any of them haven't clicked it will basically push it down and you can feel where it's not locked so you have to make sure it's locked before you do anything what I'll also do take off this cover and here there's a template basically for the iPhone 4, 4S, 5, 5S and 5C and then a couple of iPods as well so you can take this off and then you can use any phone on it but with the app here so with this app so if I open it here so with the Polaroid app with the Impossible app you choose Instant Lab and let me just show you the Werner Herzog first you have to choose an image for exposure. You can choose it either from your saved photos or you can take a new one with your device's camera. Yeah, you get the idea. It's fun, but it's a little bit weird. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to print the same picture if I can find it. And you'll see here that I can shift that up or down. To be honest, I'm just going to match the framing that I've got in the other one. So I keep it there, crop it, and then here it will basically you can choose different color types and different films, and that's this will work out calculate exposure for you. So I've got color I type in here. If I just click there, it changes the time at the bottom, and then I'm going to stop the recording just so I can print the picture. But what you have to do is just press OK and then it says put your phone down and go for it. There you go, so connected and the LED on the back comes up. So I pull the dark slide out and wait for it to, there you go, take a picture. So it flashes the screen for a certain amount of time. I then press the button at the front, print out the picture. So I then have to push the dark slide back in, otherwise when I take my phone off it's going to be exposed to light. So and that tells you to wait sort of 35 minutes for the picture to be developed. It's a little bit faster than that now but you get the idea. So this should be the same picture with the Polaroid Lab and the Impossible Lab. So we'll see how those come out. Collapse it back down again. What you have to do is squeeze the sides of each tier. And that basically collapses it back down for you. And you're done. So that's how to use the Impossible Lab and Polaroid Lab. Hopefully they're helpful. So I used to always wonder how people would forget to do outros but it appears I forgot to do an outro. That was comparison between the Impossible Lab 
and the Polaroid Lab. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. Don't really care about the share, but liking and subscribing would be good. So thank you very much for watching, and the next video I post will be with about the Reservoir adapter for the RZ67. So I hope you enjoy that, and I hope I get it done sooner or later, and that I don't break my impossible lab. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.